Hi, this is Laker, and today in Roblox Studio, we're going to look at how to use physics and collision events to make a very simple elevator. Here, I've already set up my environment with a very basic structure, using the most simple blocks that Roblox provides. Got a simple shaft, cab, a couple floors for our elevator to arrive at. I've also organized these on the in our workspace, just to keep things clean will also give us a little bit more control later on when we need to move the elevator about. Now that we have the structure set up for our elevator, let's add the pieces we need to get it moving. A couple things. We're going to use this button here as the primary source of input to get this elevator going. And For the user input, we're going to add a part called a click detector. This just detects whether the player has clicked on this brick. They have to be within a certain distance and we can tie a function to that, a custom function, that we can do pretty much anything we like. In this case, I'll start the button moving. And the place we define this function will be in a script also in the button. There's going to be a couple things in here. We're going to add a couple variables here, some global variables, because we'll be referencing these throughout the script a couple times. Firstly, we're going to have a reference to the button itself, which is just the parent of the script. We're also going to keep reference of the elevator group, because we may want to reference the whole group as a whole. Also going to add a simple boolean variable, can click, prevent the user from clicking the button too many times, causing some kind of unforeseen consequences. We don't know what will happen possibly, so we'll just restrict how many times they can click it. When the elevator starts, we'll disable the button. When it reaches its destination, we can turn it on again. They can click it again and move to another floor. We also can keep track of the floor we want the elevator to move to next. From here I'm defining 1 as the first floor, 0 will be the ground floor. Since we're starting on the ground floor, I'm setting destination floor to 1, so because we know we need to go up initially. Now let's define the function that will be called when our click detector notices that the user has clicked on this brick. So in our script, I'm going to add this line, which basically says the mouse click of our click detector in the button. When that happens, we're going to call the function that's defined in here. And there's a couple things we want to do. First, we're going to make sure that the user can't click on the button more than once, using our can click variable from before. And all this does is basically say, if the can click variable is true, which is initially, we're going to set it to false, and after that, it's going to continue to whatever code we define here. Otherwise, if it starts off as false, because the users click the button, we're going to return. And that just means we're going to exit out of this function, no harm done, and we'll just continue on our merry way. I also like to give users feedback that something's happening in the game, and that their actions have, have caused the world to change. And for that, we're going to just change the color of the brick from bright green, which we set here by default, to bright red. All we have to do is set the brick color property of our button to that. Now let's add the code to get this elevator moving. There are a number of ways we can do this, but let's take advantage of Roblox's robust physics simulator to help us out. To the base block in our elevator, we're going to insert a body velocity. This allows us to apply velocity in any direction we want. In this case, we're going to stick to the y uh, vector, as this is up and down in our environment. We don't want it moving side to side. And up in the y direction will be positive, down will be negative. To apply this, let's go into our code. We're going to add lo another local variable called vel, short for velocity, setting it to zero for now. Now let's determine if we want this elevator to go up or down. We're going to use the destination floor variable that we defined earlier. If the destination floor is one, that means the elevator is on the ground. We need to go up, so we'll give it a positive uh, velocity in the y direction. Otherwise, if the destination floor isn't 1, it'll probably be 0, that means we're already up in the air. We need to go down, so we need to give it a, velo a negative velocity. To apply this velocity, we're going to define the vector 3 that's contained in our body velocity. And this vector 3 just has three parameters has the x, y, and the z, We're just leaving the x and the z at zero, setting the y to our local variable that we defined up here. And that's all there is to it. 
Now if we step in this si simulation and try this out, we may notice that the elevator actually doesn't start to move. This might be puzzling because we give it a body velocity, it's probably going in the right direction. All the other bricks are attached to it, what could be going on? Well, as I said before, Roblox is a robust physics simulation. There's more going on here than just meets the eye. Roblox does have gravity, so we're going to have to do something to counteract this. Gravity is currently pulling the elevator down. So just like in real life, we need some kind of counterweight to the elevator. We're going to apply a force up, equal to the force of gravity. To this, we're going to add to our base another basic object, a body force. This will allow us to apply a force in any direction, just like what we did with a velocity. In this case, though, we're always going to apply the body force directly up, just because gravity is consistent and it's always going to be there. So to, uh, to figure out this force, we need two things. Force, as defined by Newtonian physics, is just the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So let's figure out the mass of the elevator first, because that's actually going to be a little bit trickier in this case. First, we're going to define a local variable to keep track of the mass. And the mass of our elevator is going to be the sum mass of all of the parts, so the walls, the base, and the button. What we're going to do is we're going to get all the children of the elevator. This is going to give us a list of all of these parts that are contained within. And we're going to use a for loop to cycle over all those parts and just sum up the mass as we go. So this is a very simple for loop. We're just looping it for starting at 1 for the number of children. First we want to check to make sure that the child in question is actually of a type part, it's a class name part. So we don't care about the body force, or body velocity, the click detector. They don't have a mass, but we might as well just skip over them anyway. And after we check to make sure that it's actually indeed a part, like the base, back wall, as you can see in here the class name is part, we're just going to add to the mass, the mass of the child in question. At the end of this, We'll have a, this mass will contain the mass of the entire elevator. So if your elevator has a whole bunch of parts, maybe a door, maybe fancy decorations, this will be able to handle it just fine. You don't need to do anything custom. Next, let's calculate what the force will be. We already know the mass. What's the acceleration? As I said before, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Well, in this case, we're lucky. The acceleration due to gravity in Roblox is kept constant at this number here, 196.2. All we're going to do is we're going to multiply the mass times this number, and that will give us a force. And just like what we did with our velocity vector, or our body velocity, we're going to apply this to the body force of the base. It's done the exact same way. We're just defining a new vector 3, again with a 0 in the x, 0 in the z. We're using f, our force as the y. And we're just applying it to the uh, force, the body force of the base. We haven't quite finished yet, but let's take a look and see what we've made so far. It's always good periodically while you're coding to go in, test, make sure everything's going as you as you planned, just so you can fix any bugs as they come up. One thing you definitely don't want to do is write everything up, wait till the last minute, and then suddenly find out it doesn't work and have no idea where to start. If you're going step by step, you can usually find what's going wrong as you go. But here we are in our nice little environment. And we'll click on our green button, it turns red, and we go up at a constant velocity. Nice! Everything's looking pretty good so far. So, yeah, here we go. Yeah, check it out. And we do have a problem though. The elevator does not stop quite yet. And that's no good. We need that for our working elevator. Elevator that only goes up, not going to help us out too much. Let's add the code to get the elevator to stop now. So first we're going to define the function that we want to call when the elevator is to be stopped. I'm just going to call it stop elevator. We're going to do a couple of things here. First, we're going to set the body velocity to zero. So nothing in the x, y, or z direction we'll cancel out whatever we put in here. So if it was moving up, it'll stop. Moving down, it'll stop. Come to a nice halt. Next, we're going to set the color back to green so that the player knows, hey, the elevator's stopped moving, the button's active again, should be able to click it. 
Now on that note, we're also going to set the can click variable that we defined up here back to true so that the uh, function down here, our mouse click function, can proceed on. Lastly, we're going to switch the destination floors so that the elevator goes to the opposite floor than it went to the first time. So if the destination floor was initially zero, if it was initially going to the ground floor, then we're going to set it to one, so go back up to the first floor. Otherwise, we'll send it back down to, to zero. But now that we have our stop elevator function, what should call it? Again, there's probably a number of approaches. But let's use the collision detection system of Roblox to help us out. So in my environment, I've actually added two hidden blocks. They're in this group floor trigger blocks. It's the first floor and the ground floor. I've had, I have the transparency of these blocks set to one so that it's invisible to the player. But for our purposes, let's turn it back to zero so that we can see them nice and clear. As you can see, they're just basic blocks I've set up at the first floor and the ground floor. Now one important thing to differentiate these blocks, besides the fact that I had them transparent, is that I've also turned off this can collide parameter. Now by default on other blocks, like if we looked at right wall, can collide is on. And that's normally what you want, because you don't want the player to be able to run into the wall and then run straight through it. You want them to hit it and have to move around or whatnot. In this case, we want to turn that off and turn it invisible so the player never even knows that it's there. It's completely hidden. So now that we have those both off, we're going to take advantage of the collision detection again, as I said. Now when two objects collide in Roblox, or touch as the terminology goes, an uh, event is called, and we can tie a function to that, which is pretty nice. So we don't have to constantly keep checking ourselves or some, something in like a loop. So back in our script, again keeping our code nice and consolidated, we're going to add just one more function here. And basically what this says is the base block of the elevator, when it's touched, we're going to connect this function that's defined in here. And what's nice about this function is we can also define a parameter, which will be the other part, basically the part that the base collided with. This is important because the base could collide with a whole number of objects in the game. It could collide with the player, it could collide with something the player drops, any old thing you can think of, but we really only care about two collisions in this case. Collision with the first floor, collision with the ground floor. So what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the blocks that we've that we've collided with are either of those floors. So if the other part dot name is first floor, again I named it here, and again in general you should give your objects good, solid, and unique names so you can do things like this. You have a lot of control. So if the other part dot name is first floor and the destination floor is one, means we're going to the first floor, then we need to stop the elevator. That means, hey, we've reached our destination. Let's stop. Otherwise, if the part is a ground floor and the destination floor is zero, again, we're referring zero to the ground floor, then we want to stop. It means we've gotten to where we want to go. And that's all there is to it. So when the elevator goes up, hits this floor, this function is called because a touch event happened. The other part.name will be the first floor, and their destination floor will be one because that was set at the beginning. It hasn't changed. And everything that's in stop elevator will be called. So let's give it a try. So, just walk around to our elevator. Here it is. Press the button. Here we go. Again, these blocks are no longer invisible. We've set their transparency one. Kind of nice for debugging purposes. But here we go. Coming up. It touched. The event was called. Button went to green. The elevator stopped. And notice how I made this block a little bit higher so that the elevator doesn't stop completely up in the air. So it's more or less level with the ground floor that we have up here. That's all there is to it. Let's check again to see if it goes down. And it does. Amazing. Now there are all kinds of little modifications you can make to any elevator you create in your world. This should be enough to get you going. That's all for today's segment. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.